Former ANC President Jacob Zuma is being represented by uh, veteran Tony Engeni at the ANC's disciplinary committee hearing. It's after Zuma decided to back the MK party ahead of the elections in May. Engeni says he wants Zuma to go through proper ANC processes before it can be stated that he violated the party's constitution. Of course, as a member of the ANC, I mean, uh, there's no way that uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to agree with the rules and regulation of the ANC. Like any other organization, the ANC has got uh, disciplinary processes mm. and its members should uh, observe and uphold those, those processes. Um, however, um, you've got a, a number of instances in the ANC history, mm. in the ANC involvement, where uh, members of the ANC um, uh, 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 vote with parties that are not in alliance with us namely the DA and others. Uh, even today, we've got a GNU, where ANC members, ANC leaders, vote with the DA. Uh, and nobody's raising the question, in terms of these rules, how do then do these rules apply to some people mm -hmm. and not to, uh, to other people? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, there's a whole big debate around that matter. That's why, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, even when I was still in the NC, I used to oppose uh, vehemently mm. this notion of voting with the DA. To me, that thing is, is unprecedented. You sitting there can say that and say he violated. But uh, you know better that in this country, you can't just sit there and say he violated. There must be a process. That's what we have been doing in the last two weeks to determine uh, the veracity of these allegations. And as I'm saying to you now that uh, uh, there's a question that arises at this point in time, when we as ANC members find it necessary to go and vote with the DA on a whole host of issues against the provisions of, uh, of that ANC constitution, this is what we've done. Why him and not others mm. is the question that arises. But because we I explained to the DC that uh, uh, historically and uh, strategically, the ANC has always embraced openness, mm -hmm. openness and transparency. And uh, Comrade J Jacob Zuma would like to have a physical meeting so that he can look uh, at his accusers in the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, especially around an you know, emotional and difficult issue like a DC. Uh, to subject an old man of uh, in the uh, in the age of or the 80s to be fiddling with uh, gadgets to to be able to face a DC is not, is not something that he'd want to do. He wa would want to sit in a room with his comrades and discuss and debate the matters at hand. So and therefore this notion of hiding mm -hmm. behind closed doors in behind a computer and a cell phone. Uh, is not something that he, mm. he can fathom. When I left, uh, it was after they um, decided that uh, they're proceeding with the virtual platform and uh, they're not going to uh, allow us to have a pre-hearing as we asked them to, to do because there are things that you wanted to talk about mm. uh, during that pre-hearing. And... Um, and they simply said, no, okay, we are proceeding uh, with or without him and uh, no pre-hearing pre and uh, we're calling the first witness. And then the, um, the first witness came today, uh, that was Mbalula, uh, who made, uh, gave some evidence about the press conference mm. in Soweto on December 16. Um, and thereafter, they tried to flight the the press conference itself mm -hmm. on screen, but uh, that did not happen. I mean, if the if the if the the picture is there, there's no voice. So there was if the voice is glitches. there, yeah. If the voice is there, there's no picture. After ten minutes, uh, like guys, this is what I warn you about about this virtual uh, platform. Okay. So I'm I'm not putting up with this nonsense. I'm I'm leaving. Right, Tony Engeni there in conversation with our Clement Mangatella on Face the Nation.